Good evening friends, Paul here, and due to the success of one of my recent videos about Earth's natural resonant frequency, or the Schumann resonance, calculated by Winfred Otto Schumann in 1952, a German physicist, I'm going to be continuing this topic this evening regarding the ionosphere and the magnetosphere. The Earth's resonant frequency, the Schumann resonance, is... Uh, affected by lightning strikes from around the world predominantly, and that's what gets at this 7.83 hertz. Very similar to the resonance, actually, of the human body. That's why, you know, these lower frequencies in this range really relax us, and they seem essential to life. I think it's magical that lightning actually charges um, the cavity, the ionosphere cavity. Remember the Frankenstein movie where the, the lightning charge <laughs> brought life to the Frankenstein monster? Well, an analogy might be made for life as far as that frequency goes. The Earth's natural resonating frequencies uh, empirically are lower than Schumann's hypothesized 10.6 hertz because Radio waves traveling through the ionosphere are not traveling at free space velocity or the speed of light, or roughly 300,000 kilometers per second. Rather, the ionosphere slows down or delays radio uh, waves in the ionosphere due to the total electron count or free electrons um, in the different layers of the ionosphere. So that accounts for the discrepancies of the mathematical form formula for the Schumann response. And check out how dominant the 7.8 hertz frequency is as compared to the harmonics. And there are D, E, and F layers to the ionosphere um, going anywhere from about 50 to 1,000 kilometers above the Earth with the maximum total electron electron count in the F layer at about 350 kilometers. And just as a point of reference, the um, satellites typically uh, travel north of 350 kilometers. This is a very safe uh, altitude for um, satellites. It's interesting to know that skywave propagation for AM signals at night, how they travel really far, as I'm penciling in down here, they're actually bouncing off the F layer at night because the D layer disappears at night. That's gone at night, so the signals can travel right up to the F layer, and they don't have to take a return trip through electron dense D layer because that doesn't that's not around at night. Even an FM signal at a much higher frequency than AM signals, you know, like AM one thousand is one megahertz, for example, but then typically FM stations are in the order of one hundred megahertz. So they're a higher frequency, and usually they just blast right through these layers into outer space. But they can travel long distances during periods of high total electron count in the E and F layers because the higher electron density blocks or pushes back those um, higher frequency FM signals on rare occasion. Usually you're going to get it um, listening to AM band, of course. Aurora's northern lights happen at, in the E layer at 150 kilometers. Auroras are created when the solar winds smash against the magnetosphere, and we can see them at night as the magnetosphere collides with the electrically charged ionized solar plasma, and we see these auroras in the blue region of this image when it's night. Now, the Earth's magnetosphere is interesting because there are basically two lobes. My understanding is that like, there's two lobes of magna about 3,000 kilometers to 6,000 kilometers below the surface of the Earth, um, roughly around Siberia and Canada. These two warring, competing uh, lobes of molten iron. Um, this accounts for the discrepancy of magnetic north or south and geographic north or south, or what's referred to as true north, which is generally over, which is over Greenwich, England, UK. Um, so what we refer to as true north is, and geographic north is 11.5 degrees different from magnetic north and south. Now, if I point a compass here north, 
where I am in the northeastern U.S., I would have to move my line there about 11.5, like say if I was going to do a dead reckoning for um, geographic north, because this is following the magnetic lines. Now, it's interesting that magnetic north on a compass is actually magnetic south. It's just a point of nomenclature in a way in that magnetic lines travel north to south. So if this is pointing what I'm perceiving as north, generally speaking, it's actually pointing up from this pole right here. This needle is pointing up, if I were to turn this page here right now to match it, but um, it would be pointing north to south. So it can be confusing when <laughs> magnetic south is actually um, compass north. Some people on res uh, resources will just say magnetic north. But technically, that's not really accurate because mag uh, magnetic lines travel, magnetic fields travel north to south. And if you notice here, in a in like a vacuum where there would be no solar uh, winds bombarding Earth, these lines would go like this in this kind of orb or this dipole uh, configuration. When in fact, what happens is as solar radiation bombards the magnetosphere and as mentioned before the total electron count greatly affects the ionosphere these magnetic or this magnetic field as i understand it actually gets pushed away in this direction um, because of that energy now as we said the ionosphere goes 50 to 1000 kilometers above the earth whereas the magnetosphere goes 65 kilometers to 6.3 million. That's at the night side with that magneto tail because it's not getting squashed back by the solar radiation. Now the magnetosphere and the ionosphere, you can see actually would overlap at about the, um, well actually the magnetosphere goes down to 65 kilometers. So that would even be around the uh, D layer, even that that influence and that's that coupling so the geographic north and south is actually the rotational axis of the earth and the earth rotates in a counterclockwise or eastward direction and we also go around the sun in a counterclockwise direction as well so this is the pole around which the earth rotates and this these are the magnetic poles and Earth's magnetic poles reverse typically every 200 to 300,000 years, although the last time the poles reversed were 780,000 years ago. We're well overdue, guys, for a magnetic shift in the Earth's polarity. Life could not be taking place on Earth, guys, without our ionosphere and magnetosphere. They protect us from this solar radiation as well as gamma radiation coming from outer space. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please post your comments below and be sure to subscribe. A lot of fun stuff going on around here at Epic, what's my channel called now? Oh yeah, Epic Alternatives. This is Paul signing out and have a great evening.